Hello everyone, the Lord be with you and also with you. Today I'm going off on a rather different tack. In our Anglican calendar, we commemorate William Wilberforce, whose main claim to fame was his prominent part in the abolition of slavery. And I'm going to spend a little time reflecting on his life, his work and his beliefs. He was born in Yorkshire, in 1759 into a wealthy family and at the time he was growing up the slave trade was booming. Slaves were captured or sold into slavery from Africa in exchange for English goods and shipped in horrific conditions to the West Indies where they were sold in exchange for sugar which was shipped back to England. Wilberforce had some interest in religion as a child, and he grew up in a Church of England family. But as he grew older, he became more interested in gambling, attending parties, and generally having a good time. He was known for being very charming and witty. He went up to Cambridge, where he didn't study very hard, as he was wealthy and he didn't need to pursue a career. However, while he was there, he met William Pitt, the future Prime Minister, who persuaded him to take an interest in politics. And he was an MP by the age of 21. Soon, he began to reflect on his life and went through a deep time of self-examination, which caused him a great deal of suffering and sorrow. But he emerged from this time with a new and intense spirituality. And this changed his life as he gave up alcohol and the endless round of partying and began to focus on more serious concerns. He saw his calling as a public one in which he would be involved in the affairs of the world. And what caught his attention was the issue of slavery. He became a friend of the abolitionist Thomas Clarkson and he wrote in his diary, so enormous, so dreadful, so irredeemable did the slave trade's wickedness appear that my own mind was completely made up for abolition. Let the consequences be what they would, I from this time determined that I would never rest until I had effected its abolition. It took many years and the efforts of many people for abolition to take place. There were so many vested interests in keeping it going. And a number of bills introduced by Wilberforce into Parliament were defeated. He was often vilified for his stance against slavery. But eventually the campaign succeeded and the slave trade was prohibited in Britain in 1807. It was a long battle, but he never gave up. And as a member of parliament and a very eloquent speaker, Wilberforce was in many ways the public face of the movement. And that is what he is probably most remembered for. But actually he was very concerned about moral life in general. He was very conservative on many political and social issues, disliking any suggestion of radicalism or revolution. But he did advocate a return to a more moral society. And he introduced improvements in education because he understood that an improvement in education could alleviate poverty. He supported legislation to improve the working conditions of chimney sweeps and textile workers. He was involved in prison reform and supported campaigns to restrict capital punishment. He was a great philanthropist and gave away a great deal of money to help the poor and the marginalised. Most of us do not have the resources of Wilberforce whether these be financial, political, personal, his eloquence or his drive and determination. But we can have the same strong Christian faith which underpinned his life. We too 
know the need for a return to Christian morality in our country. We may not be able to make speeches in Parliament, but whenever we do encounter an example of lack of morality, we should be brave enough to speak out against it. We need to advocate for the poor in whatever way we can, even if that is simply supporting the efforts of our own church's outreach programme. And that includes making sandwiches for distribution to the poor and supporting St Martin's Home for Children. Do let us spend time considering how we can make conditions better for all in our small corner of the world. Finally, we've looked briefly at the life of William Wilberforce and so we can now listen to that beautiful hymn written by John Newton, Amazing Grace. Newton was intimately involved in the slave trade as the captain of a ship transporting slaves, but later became a Christian and indeed an ordained minister and was involved in the abolition of slavery where he became an ally of William Wilberforce. There's no evidence that this hymn was written directly about slavery, but it has become closely connected with it in people's minds. Before it's played, let us pray. And we will pray the collect for William Wilberforce. Gracious Lord, you have built up your church through the love and devotion of your saints. Help us to follow in the steps of your servant, William Wilberforce, and fill our hearts with love for you and others for your sake, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And we pray for South Africa. God bless Africa. Protect our women and children. Transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all those whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. And so, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lots of love to you. Goodbye. See you again soon.